Hey guys, today we're going to go over how to pass in command line arguments and use them in a function. Uh, this video assumes you've seen the videos on opening and closing files and at least one of the ones on reading in data. So uh, I recommend if you haven't watched those or if you're not familiar with how to do those things that you go and check out those videos first and then come back here. Uh, so to start out, uh, we're going to start right here, with this int main statement. So we're passing in a couple of arguments here into main and you can think of this as a special class, a special constructor, the main function. And so we're passing in these two arguments and what it does with this first argument is, and, and these names that I've chosen here are, are kind of convention, that's what they're usually called, so that's why I've, I've used the same convention. Uh, but the first argument here, this int, it's going to store how many arguments you're actually passing in to the function. So whenever you're uh, using the command line and you're passing in arguments, uh, I'll show you how that reads in, but this first number here is going to count the number of arguments. And the first argument that it always counts is the name of the file. So uh, there will always be at least one uh, if you do this. So th this will always be at least one. And then if you pass an argument, it'll actually be the second argument. So uh, that's important to remember when you're trying to trying to access different arguments that you've passed in. If you've passed in, you know, three or four or something like that, the first argument is always the name of the uh, name of the file. So uh, the second argument here. Uh, this is a string literal, is what this is doing, and um, what's well, actually an array of string literals. And uh, what this does is this saves all of your arguments in this argv, and I'll show you how to use that in a second. Uh, before we get much further though, I want to go ahead and go over what a string literal is. A string literal is very similar to a constant array of characters. They're not the same thing, uh, but they are very similar, and one of the ways they're similar is that you can't modify. Once you've declared this, you're not going to be able to modify anything inside here. And it's the same uh, for a constant character array. right? It's not going to let you modify anything inside of this. Uh, what a string literal, literal does is it allocates this to a, a location in memory that uh, you're not allowed to modify uh, inside the program. And so that's why it's um, and so that's why it's like that. So here I've declared uh, a so this is a character pointer, but it's actually convert this into a string literal is what it's going to do. And so it's going to save each of these locations like a character array. Uh, a continuous space in memory is going to be uh, where these are stored. And then it's actually going to store one more character than what I have here. And that's a that's a null terminating character. It's just going to tell it it's going to be this right here. And that just tells it, okay, nothing follows. That's the end of my string literal. And so uh, it's going to be an array of characters with that that terminating character added on the end. And so here I've just declared it. Uh, this is the correct syntax. And then I printed it out right here. And then here I've declared a constant char uh, character array. And I've just called it character array and string literal. So when these print out, you'll be able to see them. And then I've just printed it out here. So you can kind of see this. And I'm going to go ahead and build and run this. And we're going to see that it does generate an error because, yeah. And because I'll, I'll just go ahead and read this. So constant conversion from string little to char star is deprecated. So it's it's an old outdated way to do it. This is how you do it in C from what I understand. Again, I haven't, haven't ever coded in C. So. so it's gonna give a warning, but it's gonna go ahead and actually still do it for us. So just so you know, you can play around with this. And uh, I've printed them out and you can see that it prints out correctly string literal character array. Let me see it works. Um, now, I told you that this string literal ends with that, that null terminating character. If I do this, um, and you can see that uh, it's, it's a different color here. So uh, Sublime is just telling us that, yeah, it is so, recognizing this anyways, as a character, um, not just. We'll uh, go ahead and comment not this just out. Like more characters and, for the array. You know, I told you I wanted and to we'll build show and you how this, to. And you, you can see that it stops after string. string. And of course, uh, here's there's one way to do it. There's probably here others. That there might, there's probably, but it does um, stop after better string and because to do that's it, the, the I think this is more explicit than what's happening. And so it's going to read until it gets to that. So build and run that again. And you can see it It adds it back. Now, if you just had like a zero here, that's not going to do it. Uh, it'll just print out the zero because it's just reading that as another character. So here I've declared a string. I've called it my string, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put each character. I'm gonna go through this array of characters, and I'm gonna put each one into into the string. So using a for loop, and if I don't have those spaces um, already allocated, if I don't have something there, then it's not gonna it's not gonna convert them over. So I've called it my string, 
Uh, and then what I've done here is I've, I've given a couple of arguments to the constructor on string. And the first argument is how many characters that I want it to go ahead and initialize to. So I'm telling it to initialize to 50 characters. And then the second argument here inside the single quotes is what those characters are. So I've initialized all those characters to just be blank spaces. So you could put a different character in here if you wanted. Uh, but I'm just initializing a string to, with 50 characters, all of, all of blank space. So all of white space. And then here I've got a for loop, int i equals 0. And then I've got my string literal and the location here I'm specifying. So this is my string literal. And then it's going to go through all the locations in this string literal. And while they do not equal zero. And you'll notice that this zero is turned blue again. That's sublime. Again, recognizing that uh, this is a, it means a, a null terminating character. So not a, uh, so here let me just demonstrate. So we have int uh, my, my int uh, equals zero. You can see it's the same color. Sublime is recognizing that as a null term character or as a zero. Uh, if we did char, you know, my char, and then we set it equaled, uh, equaled zero here, you can see that it's a different, it's a different character, right? So this is going to be uh, storing the ASCII value. Uh, this is going to be uh, storing the, the integer value. So, anyways, that's what that's what's happening there. That's what's going on. That's why it doesn't stop. Uh, it's actually looking for this, but you can just put zero and then I plus plus. So we're just going to iterate through the array and then I'm iterating through my string and I'm setting an equal to the location, uh, the character that's stored at the location of uh, my string literal. So that's all that's doing. We'll go ahead and build and run this and let's go ahead and take out this print statement as well. We don't need that right now. So uh, we still got the same warning, uh, and, but we can see that we're only printing out my string here. And that has indeed saved this to string literal. And just to prove to you that uh, there is a bunch of white space after that, I could do this. And you can see string literal, and then we've got a whole bunch of Ds that, because that's the character that I told it to, uh, to initialize 50 of. So uh, that's it for string literals. Let's go ahead and move on to the command line again. So clean that up a little bit. And I'm just going to go line by line through here. So here I have a class object declared. It's part of the input file stream class. It's called sample file and then I'm passing into the, the constructor. If you didn't uh, see the video on opening and closing files, all this was covered in there so you just want to go back and check that out. And then I'm passing into this uh, argv, the first location there, and remember that the, uh, I'm sorry, the second location, the first location is actually going to be the name of the file uh, that you're executable. So if you leave it as a default, it'll be a dot out. Um, and I think I called mine command line arguments, so that's what it'll save there. And then the second location will be whatever you pass in for your command line argument, um, and it'll be, we'll, we'll do this sample file.txt. That's why I have it over here. So that's what this should be passing in, is sample file.txt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment all this good stuff out. So we opened our file, we made sure to close it here at the end, we declared several strings, first name, last name, temp string, age, date of birth. And again, this was covered in the opening file, and it's going to print out first name. So that's what this does. Uh, I'll build and run, and it's we're not passing in any arguments, so you can see the file failed to open. But let's go ahead and go to the command line and use it there. So I've already built an executable here, uh, just to save time for us. And then we have here dot slash command line arguments, which is what I've chosen to call uh, call the executable file that we created. And then uh, sample file.txt is our first argument. So there's no spaces in here. Um, if there was a space in the sample file or something else, you'd want to put this in quotes. Uh, so if there's ever a white space, or for example, if I did this and I said, um, I called this my second argument, uh, that's going to be the second argument as long as there's no space in there. And I'll just leave this, I'll just build and run it just like this because we're not doing anything with that second argument, it's still saving it. but. Uh, we can see that it does indeed print out that uh, first name. So Jonathan, Sarah, Mike, and Chris. And again, all this was from a different, uh, the reading in, reading in from a file video. So cool, it seems like that worked. Uh, now let's, uh, let's do something else. Let's look at this code from Geeks for Geeks. Um, this code I just copied and pasted from the website. So I encourage you to go there and, and check it out if you want. Uh, so the first thing that they declared this a little bit differently. This is an alternate way to declare argv, you can do the star star, and it will still work for you. We've got a C out statement, you have entered, and then it's gonna print out the number of arguments here. Space, and then arguments, so it will, for us it'll be 
two arguments. This argument C should be two. You have entered two arguments, and then we have a new line. And then uh, what this uh, what this uh, for loop does here is, and since it's only one line, we don't need the curly braces. What this for loop does, it's going to print out each item in that arg v. So it's going to go through. So cool. We, so I've got a. Uh, let's just go ahead and actually, I'll just go ahead and use it. I've got the the executable that I've called uh, Geeks for Geeks, and this is the code from Geeks for Geeks. So it's in quotes here. So we should expect this is going to have two arguments, and the first one will be the name of the file, uh, which I think I called it Geeks for Geeks, and yeah. So it goes ahead and says the first argument, which is that first thing we 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 gave it here, and then the second thing is this is the code from Geeks for Geeks. And again, we can see two arguments here. Now, if I were to do the same thing here, but I got rid of these uh, double quotes, each one of these items separated by space is gonna be a new argument. That's how it's gonna read this. So we'll go ahead and build and run this. And now we can see we've got nine arguments and each one of them is printed out on a different line. So the first thing saved in argv is geeks for geeks. Second thing is this is code, etc. cetera. So um, that's how to use command line arguments. Um, how to use argc, argv. Uh, if you guys have any questions or if any of this was unclear, please let me know at the bottom and I will try and clarify and re-record if I need to. I'll see you next video.